I'm Clementine Collins. I'm honored to be before you, um, and I appreciate Pastor Alex asking me. I'm a mother. I'm a mother-in-law, grandmother times two, or three, or four, or five, or however many I've stopped counting. Um, and I'm a stepmother. Every mother, regardless of her age, takes the threads and the materials each day hands her and with God's help works them into the tapestry that becomes her life as a mother. Motherhood is one of the most wonderful stages in a woman's life. It is a new chapter in the life within it wherein it requires a lot of maturity and responsibility. And that was no less true for me as an 18-year-old teen mother. To those mothers who have nothing but wonderful memories, I applaud you, and I'm truly happy for you. However, this is what it means to me to be a mother. To be a mother, you are called to suffer. Jesus puts it this way in John 16, 21. Whenever a mother is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. But when her child is, uh, is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy that a child has been born into the world. The Bible also tells us that we must share in Christ's suffering in order to share in his glory. Romans 8, 17. Although it was 43 years ago, I remember it as if it was yesterday. I was on the table delivering my child. Hallelujah. I told Jesus, I said, Jesus, if you get me off this table, I will never, never, ever come back. And to my promise, I'm happy to, to, I'm happy to report that I did keep my promise. I did not go back. Therefore, mothers suffer when their children are born. Mothers suffer when their children die. Mothers suffer when their children are incarcerated. But most of all, mothers suffer when their children are foolish and act like they have brain damage. And, what make, and they start began making wrong choices and not living by the Christian standards that we've suffered so and worked so hard to teach them. When I first joined this church 32 years ago, my son was eight or nine years old, and God, through Pastor Vincent, hallelujah, and the members of this church, praise the Lord, helped me put him through Ephesus Academy. I want to say, however, that Proverbs 10.1 says, A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Oh yes, saints of God, to be a mother is called, you're called to suffer. So the question is, how do you handle the disappointments, the heartbreaks, and the bitter providences of the life as a mother, mothers take heart. We want to take them to the Lord in prayer. And through the Holy Spirit, we want to love them unconditionally. We ask God for the wisdom and the courage to share his love with them. And here I have 11 ways that we can love our way with children. I hope you've found out I'm talking about a wayward child now, uh, how we can love our wayward children. Number one, we want to point them to Jesus. Your rebellious child's real problem is not that they don't, is, uh, is, your rebellious child's real problem is that they don't see Jesus clearly. The best thing we can do for our children is to show them Jesus. 
No strategy for reaching our children will have any lasting effect if the underlying goal isn't to help them to know our Savior. Don't be judgmental, don't argue, and don't lecture. Number two, we want to pray without ceasing for our children. Only God can save our children. So keep, our, keep on praying and asking God to save your child. Prostrate yourself before God and plead for your child's salvation. If your child rejects Jesus, don't pretend everything is fine. Each child will require parents to reach out in unique ways. However, not reaching out at all is unacceptable. If your child is an unbeliever, don't ignore it. Holidays might be easier if you do, but eternity won't be. Number four, don't expect them to be Christ-like. If your child is not a Christian, they are not going to act like one. They're going to act like somebody who has brain damage. You know that he has forsaken the faith, so don't expect him to live by standards that you raised him by. And you did raise him, so don't feel guilty. You did your part. No matter how your child, child's unbelief exemplifies itself in his behavior, Always be sure to focus more on the heart's sickness than on the symptom. Number five, welcome your child home. Because the deepest concern is, is not your child's actions, but his heart. Don't create too many requirements for them coming home. Too many rules. You know, we can make rules, and rules are good. But if he has any desire to be with you, this is God giving you a chance to love him back to himself. If your daughter smells like weed or an ashtray, spray her jacket with Febreze and change the sheets when she leaves. But let her come home. If you find out she's pregnant, ask her to repent before Jesus. Then buy her some folic acid and take her to her 20-week ultrasound. But by all means, protect her from Planned Parenthood. That means don't let her get an abortion and let her come home. Yeah. Number six, plead with them more than you rebuke them. Be gentle in your disappointment. Your gentle forbearance and sorrowful hope will show them that you really do know Jesus. If there is a believer your, who your child trusts and perhaps who even they enjoy being around, respect that person and have them to spend time with your child. Also, you want to respect their friends. If, if, if their friends you don't like, and no doubt we will not like them, because I didn't, some of the ones my son used to hang out with. But be tolerant of them anyway. And then in the interim, Christ will use your love that you're showing toward them and their friends to draw them to themselves. And also, when you have someone who, like Pathfinders, the persons who work with Pathfinders, that's who work with my child because I was a single mother, let them uh, be with uh, those persons because they'll accept being called an idiot from them, but they won't be accepted from you. Email or text them. Thank God for that my grandson Richard taught me how to text because I'm using that now to send him, Michelle, Clarence, and everybody else that I think that I'm claiming a text or an email telling them about God's goodness. When you read something in the Bible, saints of God, that encourages your heart and helps you love Jesus, write it down in a couple of lines and send it to your child. The best exhortation for them is positive examples of, of Jesus' joy in your life. God's word is never, never proclaimed in vain. Take them to lunch. Get together with them face to face if you can. So if they are willing to get together with you for lunch, praise God and use the opportunity. Before lunch is over, however, 
we got to be wise, pray with them and ask them to pray as well. They will no doubt roll their eyes or look at you like you're an idiot, but it's okay to be crazy for Jesus. The last one, take an interest in their pursuits. Jesus spent time with tax collectors and prostitutes, and he wasn't even related to them. Have your child, have your child decided that they want to be a rapper? I, one of my grandkids wanted to be a rapper. Put some earplugs in your ear and pray, Lord, help me today. Encourage them and never stop praying that they will begin to use their gift for Jesus' glory instead of their own. Therefore, to the suffering mothers, and there are some in here, I'm not the only one, I pray, I say pray without ceasing for your child. You are praying not because you want them to uh, be the good kids again that they used to be when you was raising them, not because they'll like the hymns instead of rap music, not because you uh, want, you uh, don't want to stop being embarrassed at Wednesday night prayer meeting, not even because you want to sleep at night knowing that they are not going to hell. The ultimate reason you want to pray for them is to welcome them and plead with them to come to Jesus. Only God's grace can draw them from their perilous pursuits and bind them safely to him, Jesus Christ. He will do this for all who call upon him, saints of God. Be faithful, therefore. We heard the song about Jesus. I love, don't you just love that name? I love to even just call the name. So just call Jesus. You have a child incarcerated who acting crazy? Call the name Jesus. Get on the floor. You know, we got to fast and pray because God says some things he's not going to answer unless we fast and pray. Fasting is a way of sacrificing something. So fast for your child. Pray for your child. Say Jesus, Jesus, Jesus for your child. Lastly, I want to say that this is something that blessed my heart. It says, my mother taught me medicine. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to stay that way. This is everything that I know about being uh, a person or a mother. My mom taught me about genetics. You are just like your father. My mother taught me about my roots. Don't you think you were born in a barn? My mother taught me about anticipation. Just wait until your father gets home. She also taught me about religion. You better pray that uh, will come out of my carpet. And all the time, the all-time favorite thing my mother taught me was uh, justice. One day you will have kids, and I hope they turn out just like you. God bless you and thank you.